because of the lifestyle I was living, protecting myself, carrying a gun at a young age, been shot at, and people trying to kill me and my friends, and just really the neighborhoods and going to the clubs and just very dangerous environment. I always carried a gun. I chose to be violent. I wasn't gonna let no, some people give away their stuff. I protected my stuff. You know, I didn't want to give nothing away. I wasn't gonna nobody take nothing from me. So I was gonna do whatever it takes to, to have what was mine, you know. This is where I come from. This is what happened to me. At nighttime, this is full of people, drug infested, people drunk, and just, um, just very dangerous, you know. So this is, um, my house is like right behind the fence. There's a fence behind this uh, project here and my house is right on the other side. My father would take a bus into the city uh, with my mother. They were going and um, coming back from work. Uh, some young men went to get out the bus. They reached into my father's pocket to grab his wallet. And so my father grabbed the guy's hand and so they pulled him out of the bus and beat my father. I seen him in a bed bleeding and when, when I had that experience, seeing my father like that, a seed was planted in my heart to like want to murder, like want to hurt the people that did this to my father. You know, hurt people, hurt people. You know, you've been hurt, you're gonna hurt someone. And so I was provoked to unrighteousness. Just that seed was being planted in my heart of, of bitterness. So this is where I got arrested. Um, I was right on this corner, it came uh, with my friend on some car, in a car with some guys. This used to be a gas station, so we went to go buy alcohol. And while I was um, there, pulled up, another car pulled up next to us. My friend opened up the door, hit their car, so they wanted to fight. And um, so I was telling them to be cool, you know, calm down, because I had a gun and I didn't want to eventually shoot these guys. I had no idea what I've been through in my life. So that made them more aggressive. And then one of my friends came out the store came in between the two cars, one of the guys hit him. And before he hit him, I seen one of the guys look like he went under the shirt like he had a weapon. I felt like my life was already in danger. I came to a point where I'm gonna shoot before I get shot at. I'm gonna kill before I get killed. And that's the point that I came to in my life. When I shot the guys, I, I came up this street here and I seen a police officer coming by. And so I just driving slow, taking it easy. I didn't know if they had a description of the car yet. I took it right here on the street. This is veterans. I turned like this and right where this canal is, I rolled down my window and I took my gun and I threw it as hard as I could, flung it, tried to throw it right into that canal, which the police uh, eventually found. I, I didn't know they had cars behind me. And right when I did this turn, right at this U-turn right here, they had cops right here, behind me, everywhere. And they caught me, and I couldn't do nothing. They met me at the wrong time. And I, I'm very sorry for that, for the family that I hurt. That's why I want God to use me. God didn't create me to take life. He created me to give life. That's why I preach the gospel. That's why I do prison ministry, because of this. Because of what happened here is what drives me to be the man that God created me to be. I was facing the death penalty. I was arrested for first degree murder, two attempted first degree murders in 1993. Because one person died, the two other guys that I shot uh, almost died and only one person died. I tried to shoot five people. Ended up going to trial and uh, 11 jurors felt it was second degree murder, which carries a life sentence. 
Uh, only one person felt it was manslaughter. They came back with manslaughter. They gave me 15 years for manslaughter. They gave me seven and a half years for each attempted at manslaughter. They ran my time concurrent, which means put the time together. So I did seven years and three months in prison. Three days after I got arrested, uh, as I was sitting in the holding tank thinking about well, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to survive in the prison, God made himself real to me. I got my first revelation that he was holy and that I was a sinner, and that after I did all my time, I was gonna go straight to hell. And I remember that my mother told me that Jesus died for me. And when I put faith in the, in the fact that Jesus died for me, uh, I felt the Spirit of God, something like hot oil poured down inside of me. I was confused, it didn't make any sense to me after all the things I've done, all the stealing, shooting, and all the things I was involved in, how God would want me. And I love the fact that He came after me Uh, as I began to seek God and get to know Him, I had a brother in the Lord introduce me to Andrew Warmick to one of his cassette tapes. And uh, when, when I first got saved, I was really hungry for the truth. I just really wanted to know God. Uh, and I had so many people telling me so many different things about God. When I, when I got this tape, the cassette tape, from a Christian brother that was in the prison with me, uh, I started getting those tapes for free. I found out I could get three for free. And he was like one of the first persons I ever heard teach what I heard God telling me through the scriptures. I guess I needed a confirmation from someone who had been in the Word longer than me. So this is my treasure from other partners uh, from when I first got introduced to Andrew Warmick. I, I saved all these tapes. I know a lot of people get CDs and stuff, but you know, it might be old to somebody else, but this it just means a lot to me. Down here, I got my, the new stuff since I've been out, uh, my DVDs, all my video of the month now because I'm a partner now, thank God, and uh, uh, God wants you well, awesome teachings. Yeah, I'm just excited and grateful for everyone that was involved in me getting all that, that stuff, you know. I'm a partner now, and I have actually went from not being able to give anything uh, to now, you know, being able to give a significant amount uh, back to the ministry, which is awesome, is exciting. As soon as I got out, I started doing prison ministry, going back into the prisons, and then uh, going to juvenile prisons, going to the men's prisons. I started my own business, doing repairs to people's houses and things like that. God has turned my business into a ministry. I got about like eight guys that were in prison that work for me now. One guy did uh, 31 years, one guy, two of them did 20 years, another man did eight years. It just depends. God sends people into my business that have been in trouble, that want change. I only help people who want change. These are men that have changed their life just like me and that have proven to me that they love God, they want change, they actually do prison ministry with me. The greatest miracle I've seen is not the fact that I got out of prison, is how he changed me on the inside. Getting me out of prison was the easy part. It was changing me is the hard part. For us to submit to his word and to begin to walk in the new man that's in us, uh, you know, and, and I think that is, uh, that's really the goal to, to be, to be in the image of Christ, you know, to, to reflect him here on earth. One of the reasons why it drives me to come back to where I come from, I, I, I haven't left this place. I'm here. Uh, that's why I, I do a lot of the juvenile ministry where I, I try to reach the younger kids before they become men. And God looks at us and he can see the hidden talents, the abilities, the, what we're able to do to really make a difference. And God wants to teach us how to express ourselves in a righteous, in a righteous way, in a way that that makes a difference and, and to come back where I come from instead of leaving this place and saying, you know, there'll never be any good, there could be nothing good that would come out of New Orleans, you know. It's amazing that the gospel does change lives. It, it makes a difference. It, it changed my life, it could change anybody's life. And, and this is what I, I look forward to every day when I get up. We can make a difference, you know, the gospel makes a difference. You know, the true gospel.